What is rape? That's a fairly easy question to answer. Rape is sexual activity forced upon a person without his or her consent. It doesn't have to be committed by a stranger. In fact, most rapes are committed by someone who the victim knows. Rape also doesn't have to involve obvious violence. It can involve coercion and threats. And sometimes no visible physical harm takes place. But sex without consent is rape. So what about this one? What is consent? Consent means basically that you're agreeing to the act. It means that you're a willing participant. Unfortunately, consent seems to be a much more complicated issue than it should be. Something that's become more widely accepted in recent years, but is still not nearly as universally understood as it should be, is the fact that if someone's extremely intoxicated, they're incapable of giving consent. That's just one of the ways that consent has become unnecessarily complicated, but another equally pressing issue is the issue of enthusiastic consent rather than simply absence of refusal. I should note that from here onward, I'll be primarily speaking in terms of men who rape women. I'm aware that men can be victims of sexual violence too, and they frequently are, and women are also perpetrators of sexual violence. But aside from the reality, regardless of what certain men's rights groups would have you think, the reality is that women are victimized far more often than men. Aside from that reality, the issue that I'm covering at the moment is one of gender stereotypes and how they relate to rape culture. So that's how I'll be speaking about it from here on. And that doesn't mean that I'm ignorant of the reverse situation, simply that it's not what I'm talking about right now. So I'll thank you to not even bother with the what about the men's comments. So like I said earlier, rape doesn't necessarily have to involve obvious violence. Coercion and presumed consent are tactics that are used by rapists just as much as, if not more, than outright physical attacks. Because we live in a society where men are expected to be the sexual aggressors, and women are expected to offer at least token resistance to all sexual advances, lest they appear easy or slutty, the idea of enthusiastic consent seems to have completely escaped the attention of most people. We're taught that men are supposed to be trying to get some from women, and that good girls don't put out. What I mean when I say enthusiastic consent is that both partners are clearly saying yes and that silence should not be interpreted as consent. Far too often women end up being raped simply because enthusiastic consent is not properly understood. When men have been socialized to believe that they're supposed to be convincing women to give it up, they're poorly equipped to understand the fact that no really does mean no. Now I want to be really clear here, I am not excusing rape or rapists. It's an absolutely unconscionable act. I'm not saying that men don't realize that the woman they just talked into sleeping with them didn't really want it. If you spent the last hour seducing your date while she repeatedly tries to change the subject until eventually she sighs in resignation and just stops resisting you, I hope it's pretty clear that she wasn't really up for sex. What I am saying is that too many people see rape only in terms of violent stranger rape, where a random woman is pulled into the bushes at gunpoint and violently assaulted. Not enough men are aware that what they or their friends are doing every weekend is actually rape. And to some extent I can understand that reluctance, the reluctance to embrace the ideas I'm talking about here. No one wants to be a rapist. But until men are fully on board with the idea of enthusiastic consent, there will be no change in the rape culture that we currently live in. Something else I want to be very clear about. I wholeheartedly reject the idea that education of women is effective rape prevention. That thought pattern is just another kind of victim blaming, perpetuating the, the idea that there was something a rape victim could have done differently, or that women can prevent or are responsible for the actions of the men who rape them. The only people who can prevent rape are rapists. They can prevent it by simply not doing it. That said, I do want to address the issue of education. We need to be teaching girls and young women that their pleasure matters, that they're supposed to be getting something out of sex too. I can remember the sex ed classes I took in elementary school and high school, where we were taught about the mechanics of sex in terms of reproduction and disease transmission. And that's important stuff that needs to be taught. But what strikes me in retrospect is that the only time pleasure was mentioned was in the context of male ejaculation, when the teachers explained that the friction on the penis felt good for the man and led to orgasm and ejaculation. I don't remember the clitoris, female sexual pleasure, or female orgasm ever being mentioned in those classes. Everything I learned about the clitoris, I actually learned from Sue Johansson, 
Google her. She's fantastic. <laughs> I'm not saying that school programs should be instructing kids on how to get off. I'm just saying that it's worrisome to me that the only education that children get about sexual pleasure is out of the male. That fact, combined with the social conditioning that I mentioned earlier, leaves a lot of young women feeling like they don't need to get anything out of sex. That it's really all about getting the guy off. They pick up these signals that if they're not really into it or not really enjoying it, that's okay, that's pretty much the status quo because they were never taught about their own desires and pleasure anyway. And even when these young women do have some concept of their own desires and their own pleasure, they're often scared to own it or to take control over their sex lives because nice girls don't do that. Nice girls keep saying no and make the man work for it. And the more that young men see their work and coercion rewarded with sex, the more they'll continue to engage in behaviors that, while they are not necessarily rape in all cases, I'm not saying that every time a man initiates sex, it's rape. But these behaviors do have a huge amount of overlap with sexual assault. We need to be teaching young women that sex is supposed to be good for them too. They need to be empowered to make their own sexual decisions, to ask for sex when they want it, and to not be ashamed of their desire. They need to know that if something doesn't feel good or if they don't want it, they should feel free to say no and to mean it, not just to say no as a way to play coy. We need to help them feel empowered not to play hard to get, but to be as upfront and honest about their desires or lack thereof as men are traditionally expected to be. We need to teach young men that no unequivocally means no, not keep trying and maybe. We also need to teach them that a woman saying yes to sex right away or being upfront about her desire or even making the first move and being sexually aggressive does not make her easy or a slut. Young men need to know that they don't always have to be the aggressors, that women don't have to be resistant to sex, and in fact, that if a woman is resistant to sex, it means that they need to stop because proceeding in the face of resistance is rape. So I want to say specifically to the young women watching this, don't listen to people who say that there's something wrong with sexually assertive women. Learn as much as you can about your own body and your own sexual options. Even if you have to do some research on your own because you're not learning it at home or at school. Like I said, I learned everything I knew. I, well, not everything I know, but my initial lessons in female sexual pleasure actually came from a television show because women aren't taught about their own sexual pleasure. You don't have to play hard to get if you're into a guy. If he has a problem with you saying what you want, he's probably bad news anyway. To the young men watching this, you don't have to convince your girlfriend to give it up. Trust her instincts and her desires about sex. If she says no or resists you, stop. She's not playing hard to get. It means she doesn't want to fuck you. Talk to her when things are starting to get heavy and intense. Ask her. Do you want me to touch you? Do you want me to kiss you? Do you want to have sex? If her answer is anything other than an enthusiastic yes, stop. Because if she's not saying yes, it doesn't mean she's playing hard to get. It means she doesn't want to fuck you. If you can't talk about sex, you shouldn't be having it. 